it was about, I think it was about 1992. We were touring and we were doing about 300 dates a year and we were away from the children a lot. They were little. And it was just a rough time and we were on tour and you ever just get exhausted? And let me tell you, I love y'all. Y'all are awesome. After a concert, I would stay and sign and pray and see grandbabies' pictures and all kind of stuff till the, till the cows came home. But this particular day, we'd done one concert Sunday morning, and we were doing another place Sunday night. And I was just tired. I had kind of had it. And after the, after the thing, and people were standing there, I noticed a man staying at their desk. He looked normal. He had on kind of a sweater vest and glasses, and, and he just kind of stood the side like he was waiting for everybody else to leave, which is fine. Everybody finally did, and I want you to know, I was sitting there, and he leaned down, and he said, I need to tell you something. I said, okay. And he got right, he did his hand, and he got right in my ear, and what he had to tell me, y'all, was not a prayer request. It was the worst, foul, horrible thing anybody had ever said to me. And it shocked me so much. First, I'm listening, then I'm going, my eyes are big as saucers. And when he did that, I shoved him out of the way and ran out to the bus. And I'm tell you what, I got to the back of the bus, sat on that little couch in the little bedroom thing there. And I had a pity party, party balloons, cake, everything, y'all. I mean, snot to my toenails. I am crying like my mama died. And I'm sitting back there, and I, I said, okay, God, that's it. I have had it with your crazy people. I am going to stop this singing mess. I'm going to quit doing all this. And the first thing I thought of was, I'm going to go work at Denny's as a waitress. Nothing wrong with working at Denny's as a waitress, but I don't know why that was my thought. And I am sitting there, and I mean, I am heave-hoeing like Destiny when she was a little girl, when she did the, <laughs> you know, kind of crying. I'm doing that, and as I'm sitting there, Everybody else is out loading up the bus, doing what they do. I'm on the bus by myself. And I looked up, and there stood the Lord in the aisle of our bus. And I'll never forget it. He had his arms folded, and he was patting his foot like my mother used to do when I had a temper tantrum when I was a kid. And, you know, you know, we pray to see Jesus or angels or something, and then when we do, it scares the you-know-what out of you. So I'm sitting there, and the Lord is looking at me, and he said, Reba Faye Rambo. And you know it's bad when he uses your middle name, too. <laughs> he said, and I said, yes, sir. He said, what are you talking about? He said, do you know that if you go to Denny's, I'll be sitting there at the counter having pancakes and sausage. Where can you go to get away from my love? He said, if you make your bed in hell, I'll be there. He said, as a matter of fact, he said, you know all those promises of mine that you're always quoting and memorizing? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you know, those are not just promises. Those are threats. If you make your bed in hell, I will be there, girl. And I remember sitting there, and I grabbed, a, it was the inside of a pantyhose thing, a white thing, and, and some kind of a pencil, and started scribbling this idea down. And can I tell you that tonight, that no matter where you are, Destiny talked about at the beginning of this, no matter where you are, what you're going through, I bet a lot of y'all have felt like quitting this last year. I'm sure, I know I have gone through things, emotional and mental battles the last two years. I never thought I'd gone through it. I, I was always, I'm always a positive person. I love to laugh. But let me tell you, the last two years, I've learned how to cry. I've learned how to, what it feels to be lonely. I know what it feels like to have your heart broken. But can I also tell you that every step I've walked, the Lord has been there. Every lonely night, he has pulled up beside my bed, had his chair there, and, hold my, and he's held my hand because that's how much he loves me. And maybe you feel like nobody cares, nobody understands, but can I tell you, he does. He loves you so much, he can't keep his eyes off you. No matter what I do, He's always got me on His mind. He's a parent through and through, like a daddy in a noisy crowd. When I cry, He knows my voice. 
I'm flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone. I don't really have a choice. I can't. 